about two hours of sunlight a day. Now, what happens is the two hours a day, uh, sunlight enters 98% through, as I mentioned earlier. Through your uh, eyes. Enters your eyes. 98% through your eyes. So uh, sunlight can, in fact, be obtained anywhere. You can be under a shade tree. You do not have to be in direct sun beating down on your skin. You need to be able to be outside of a box where sunlight can flow in through your eyes. And when I say boxes, uh, the obvious box is you're in your house. You you are in a office right now. Uh, people who are in cars are in boxes. People who wear glasses are in boxes. Uh, boxes mean that sunlight is being restricted from coming into your body. And so if you have glasses, if you take the glasses off for a little bit during this 30 minutes of sunlight, then you get the effects of sunlight. And so basically, uh, uh, this is probably a good spot to say, what about all the sun that's coming in through your eyes? What's, what's happening here? You know, what's happening to the body that the sun is causing. You know that most people that live in different parts of the world cannot get an hour or two hours or even 30 minutes a day of sunlight. Yeah. Yeah, you'll get to that. You'll get to what we're going to oh, do well, about well, it. Uh, I think we should answer that right now. That'd be great. The, the answer is that if you can't get that 30-minute minimum to two-hour ideal of sunlight, then the equation that I've used is that six hours of full-spectrum light in your vicinity, meaning in your office, your home, wherever you're at, uh, six hours of, of full-spectrum light is equivalent to 30 minutes of sunlight. So these people that can't get out, if they arrive at the understanding that artificial light is bad and they're replacing it with full-spectrum, and then they have that exposure. Well, you are in your office now, and the chances are, even a hard worker like you, you're probably spending eight to ten hours. <laughs> <laughs> you think I'm a hard worker? <laughs> <laughs> I have full spectrum above me. I have full spectrum everywhere. Yeah, exactly. So what you're doing is you're getting your sunlight exposure. Your body is absorbing it like a sponge. And, and so we... That's how you get it, and, and, and that's the game of how do you replace the lack of sunlight. And um, did that answer that question? It did. It did. The thing is that people will also go from light to dark rooms. So as they move about their home, they're not always going to be sitting under a full-spectrum light. Well, the obvious solution to that is why don't you put another bulb in the dark room? Exactly. <laughs> and then call the light energy company. <laughs> What a novel idea. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, interestingly enough, sunlight, uh, when you get sunlight, it uh, lasts in the body about 48 hours. Um, it's, it doesn't, it's not in there and it lasts forever. It dissipates. People who work in uh, New York, office buildings take a vacation to Florida. They go down to Florida. Uh, they get a week in the sun, they come back, their, their spirits are high, their health's good, and, um, and two days later, uh, the machine starts grinding down. <laughs> so you have to replenish sunlight every day. You know, 48 hours is the most you can get out of that before your body uses it up. And, and so by you having bulbs throughout the office, you're actually doing a great job because you're getting a steady flow, right? And, and it's keeping your body going. So uh, that's the game here. Uh, having bulbs in even in one room and not in the other is not too bad because uh, you're not going to spend 48 hours in the dark room. But what is coming through my eyes now? Okay. What is happening from the full-spectrum bulb into my eyes that's translating over six hours into 30 minutes of sunlight. Okay. Uh, and when you say what's coming from the full, full spectrum is the same thing that's coming from the sun. It's the frequencies, right? 
uh, wavelength is the correct term. Okay. A wavelength means the length of a wave. The shorter the wave, the different color you see, like blue is a short wave, red is a longer wave. And the length of these waves, this is how we perceive color by these waves. Well, remember I said there's about 1,500 major wavelengths in Correct. sunlight. And those enter through the eyes, and the mechanism is that they enter through the optic nerve into what is called the hypothalamus gland. And the hypothalamus gland redirects sunlight to... It does several things. It redirects the sunlight to the different glands in the system. It, a pineal gland is an example where the hormone melatonin is produced. Um, melatonin is produced during the dark period when you're sleeping. That's what your body produces. That's why you sleep so well. Then... In, when the sun enters the eyes, it shuts in the morning. When you first get up in the morning, it shuts down the melatonin production and switches uh, into the production of serotonin. Uh, serotonin is this feel-good <laughs> uh, type of thing where you're active and you feel good. So that mechanism takes place by the light entering the hypothalamus, switching either switching the dark melatonin production to the daylight serotonin production. Well, if you don't get sunlight in there, then when you wake up in your apartment, you go outside, it's still dark, you are overcast, you get in your car, you go into the office. All during that time, you never got anything to turn off the melatonin. <laughs> and... So your body needs to uh, artificially do that. So when you, Kim, have a bulb in your bathroom or above your head, the minute you get exposed to that, it's doing the job of sunlight. It's switching the melatonin off and producing the serotonin. Got it. And the hypothalamus gland does several other things as a result of the sun coming in. It actually regulates your body's biological clock, its biorhythms. It's, it tells the body whether it's day or night, whether it's Texas time, East Coast time, West Coast time. It tells it whether it's winter or summer. So the whole body reacts to this sensory input that comes in. So we regulate our, our body clocks. Um, if I'm traveling from the West Coast to the East Coast to do uh, a lecture, I say, uh-oh, I know jet lag's coming up. <laughs> so what I do is I start turning the lights on three days in advance because there are three time zones. So each time I start turning the lights on earlier or later, depending on whether you're going East Coast or West Coast, turning the lights on earlier, then basically my body starts the clock adjusting. And then two days, and then one day. So by the third day in advance of my flying, I have readjusted my body clock with nothing else than the use of full-spectrum light or because I can't use sunlight because uh, it's, it, it's dark in the areas now that I want to alternate. You know, I'm on the West Coast, it's dark. So full-spectrum light allows me to juggle my body clock. So when I fly to New York, I get off the plane, I'm already adjusted to New York time. I don't get jet lag. So basically, that occurs in the hypothalamus gland. So what we've done is we've regulated the glands that produce uh, the hormones, melatonin, and serotonin. We balance the body clock. And probably most important is that the hypothalamus converts light into, call them pseudo-electrical pulses that go through the body and feed light energy to every cell in the body. Cells need some kind of an energy source besides food and uh, air. 
You know, I mean, you eat food, you eat nutrients, you uh, you breathe oxygen, uh, 